Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be work M. Well, Composer X is Josquin. Josquin Despres, or Despres, or Despres, or whatever you want to call him. Everyone just calls him Josquin. J-O-S-Q-U-I-N. It's much easier that way. He was a composer of the High Renaissance. He lived from about 1450 to 1521. Actually, he died on August 27th, two days before my birthday. I mean, not that I was born in 1521. And he was an extraordinarily gifted composer who wrote in the major media of the day, which is that which is sacred music for unaccompanied chorus for the most part, and songs and things like that, you know. But uh, his mass settings are exquisitely beautiful. Oh my goodness, they are so, so lovely. And the one that really hooked me for reasons I can't even explain was the Missa Ave Maris Stella. Now, the names of the mass in these cases usually come from the source material that the composer uses to develop in writing the piece. Uh, essentially, Let's just make our lives easy with a simple explanation. The Mass in those days was the symphony of the period. It was the medium in which serious composers worked because that was the only thing there was. There were not big orchestras. We didn't have large orchestral forms or instrumental forms or abstract musical forms. Music was vocal music. And the highest form of vocal music was sacred music. And the highest form of sacred music was polyphonic music. That is contrapuntal music for a certain fixed number of voices or parts with a terribly inter int intricate, intricate textural fabric. And within this seemingly limited set of resources, basically, I mean, a bunch of voices and a certain fixed number of them and contrapuntal procedure, composers did amazing things. They wrote music as varied and rich and delicious as the difference between Mozart and Beethoven. I mean, it's really phenomenal stuff. And the more you get to know it, the more interesting it gets because the more you get to know it. And there's tons of it. Oh my God, there's just tons of it. There's just thousands and thousands of mass settings. And a lot of them are based on the same tunes. Ave Maristella is a Cantus Firmus mass based on a plain chant. Now, what does that mean? What it means is that there was a chant. The chant is a prayer, Ave Maristella. And, and the mass takes that chant and uses it as its fundamental thematic material. Now it can do this in many ways. It can, it can do it by presenting the entire chant in long notes in one of the inner parts. You don't hear the chant normally. You don't necessarily know the source. It's in there somewhere, but it's not a, a, a simple repetition of pre-existing material. It's a development, a variation of that material. And at the same time as you can hear bits of the chant in long notes in one part, the other notes can be, the other parts can be doing other parts of the chant using that or using free material that the composer has added. Or doing, there's, there's, there's a tremendous amount of compositional freedom in, in works of this type. But what they all have in common is a, 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 certain, uh, what would you call it? I mean, just an, an incredible beauty of line and a certain richness of texture, even when there aren't that many voices going. I mean, because the harmony is modal harmony. It's not usually tonal harmony. That is, it's based on the old church modes. If you know, for example, Vaughn Williams' Talus Fantasia, that's a modal work. You know, it has it has a slightly different set or relationship between the various types of tonality so that some of the scales, for example, in modal harmony are partly major and partly minor. So that means that the harmony goes places that we, we don't necessarily expect it to based on what we're used to. Um, and it can be very affecting because you can have these juxtapositions of what you might call, I mean, in the most shallow sense, happy and sad chords, which makes them on the one hand somewhat mysterious it, you know, and, and, and often very, very unexpected. So the harmony is exquisitely beautiful, but the harmony arises from the interplay of these various voices. And it, it can be a difficult body of work to get into because it takes time, like anything else. 
And there is a certain similarity. I mean, I mean, you know, unaccompanied sacred choral music is a limited medium. But within those limitations, as I said before, extraordinary variety and expressive intensity is possible. And the great composers exploited that. And Josquin was one of them. And his music is glorious. And let's face it, the evil god Cancrozans is not going to destroy all of Renaissance sacred music, but for one work per composer. I mean, our, the sources are tough enough. There's so many composers where we only have a tiny fraction of what they wrote. That's all that survived because publication was in its infancy. And even, you know, it, it, the music would have to be transcribed and preserved somehow or written down by hand. And, you know, I mean, this was not, we're lucky to have as much as we do. Let's put it that way. And and the God Cancrozans is not going to make it worse, especially music that's written in praise of God. I mean, for heaven's sake, how could you be curmudgeonly about that? So give a shot to Josquin's Missa Ave Maris Stella. You won't regret it. Keep on listening, friends, and take care.